Okay, let's get wild and crazy with our dots and boxes machines. Here's a machine, but I'll just stick with boxes going to the left for now. Let's keep it simple that way, but playing with boxes to the right is going to be mighty fun as well. And uh, let's mess with the numbers at the top. Now we've done 2-1 machines and 3-1 machines and 10-1 machines and x-1 machines. Let's get kind of crazy with the numbers. A 1-1 one, one machine. So here's my very first question. Is a 1-1 one, one machine interesting? Yes or no? Well, that's a subjective question, so it might be interesting to you, might be interesting to me, might not be interesting to someone else, but first of all, what happens? Well, put in one dot, zoom. One dot explodes, it becomes one dot. One dot explodes, becomes one dot. It explodes, becomes one dot, and in fact, it just shoots off to infinity. So actually, it seems pretty wild and untamable to me. It just shoots off to infinity, not much else you can do. All right. Okay, uh, let's start messing with the numbers. Instead of doing a 2-1 machine, what if I made it a 1-2 machine? So it flipped it the other way around. How does that one work? Well, you put in one dot, and explodes and becomes two. Each of those explodes become two, so two dots become four. Four become eight. Off to infinity again, but this time it's like expanding out as it shoots off to infinity. Again, pretty wild. Not sure if it can be tamed. Not sure there's much to say about that any other than that. Okay, fine. All right. One, two, one, one. Let's mess around with both numbers. Suppose I did say a three, two machine. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, three dots explode to become two, and I have a feeling this one's a little more tame. So let's try it. I'm going to go back to the very beginning. We'll put in one dot. Zoom. Stays as one dot. Put in a second dot. Zoom. Nothing happens yet because you need three dots to explode, so it stays as two dots. But put in a third dot. Zoom. Three dots explode. Kaboom! To become replaced with two dots, one place to the left. So the code for three now is nothing, 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 nothing. Two dots, zero dots. Two, zero, four. All right, dots always in the rightmost box. Zoom. Two, one, five. Zoom. Two, two. Now we're feeling a sixth dot is going to be particularly exciting. Here it comes. Zoom. Kapow! Dot, dot. Kajubal! Dot, dot. Two, one, zero. Grand. All right, I'll do what I did before. Let's go all the way up to 13. What's the code for 13 in the strange 3-2 machine? Whoa, I don't know. I have no idea. What is the machine doing? No idea. All right, um, so maybe the way to get the code for 13 is just go back to start, erase all we've got, and just put in 13 dots. Let's do it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 dots. All right, lots of explosions. Three explode, kaboom, to be replaced by two. Three explode to become two. Three explode to become two, kabang. Uh, three explodes become two yet again. Golly gee. All right. Uh, one dot left over and a bunch of dots here. Um, three explode. Kajam! Become two. Kajoop! Become two. And I guess that leaves, what, two dots here? Pretty smudgy. Sorry about that. Uh, oh, I still got four, uh, three dots within here that can explode. Kaboom ball! Dot, dot. That's it. Two, one, two, one. Two, one, two, one. Code for 13 is two, oh, messy, 2121. Two, one. Wow. In fact, let me just write that a little more neatly. 13 apparently is 2121. One. Okay. All right. Hours of fun to be had working out codes for different numbers. But the real question, of course, in my brain right now is what is this machine actually doing? Are we in some kind of base arithmetic like we were before, or is there something brand new? What's actually happening here? All right, okay, so I'm going to try to figure this out now. So let me just clear the box mach the machine again. So all the boxes get cleared. Okay, now we have played this game, but every game we've played so far has been dots here are always worth one. So we know those are worth one. Uh, and we know that three of these explode to make two of those. So three dots here is equivalent to two dots here. So that makes me wonder, could I figure out the value of a dot in this place? Um, well, I don't know what the, what the value is going to be. In fact, let me, just write, let me just write W for what. I don't know what it's going to be. But we do know that two watts, two dots here, is the same as three ones, three dots here. Oh, okay, there's a little piece of arithmetic I can do. Two watts is the same as three ones. Uh, let's divide both sides by two, and I get that what must be worth three halves, one and a half. All right, three halves. Okay, let's keep going. So I do know that if I go next spot over, Three dots here, three three halves, is equivalent, kabang, to two dots here. All right, so what's the value of a dot here? Um, well, 
Uh, I won't use W again, but I'll use V, Vot. I don't know what it's going to be. All right, but I do know that two Vots is the same as three, three halves. <laughs> Let's divide both sides by two, and I see that Vot is three halves squared. That's nine fourths. I think something's going on here. This is three halves squared, nine fourths. So I bet we have a prediction for the value of this one. Um, let me call it uh, WV, let's call it Z or Z. Depends what country you're in. All right, Z. I do know that three of these, three, three halves squared, is the same as two Zs. So three, uh, sorry, two Zs is the same as three, three halves squared. It's a little bit messy. Oh, my fingers are smudgy too. Two Zs is the same as three, three halves squared. Divide each side by two. I see that Z is indeed three halves cubed. That's what, uh, 27 eighths. Well, bingo. Looks like we are working with something equivalent to base three halves, base one and a half in some sense. Um, I bet if you did the next one, it would be indeed three halves to the fourth power. What's that going to be? 81 sixteenths and so on. Wow. Um, I better be a little bit careful here calling this base one and a half, because some mathematicians will object to this, because the coefficient I've got here is zeros, ones, and twos, and two is actually bigger than our base number, which is a bit weird. Um, but in some sense, it really is working with powers of three halves, powers of one and a half, with these coefficients. So in some sense, it is a, base, a version of base one and a half. Wow. All right, okay, so I can look at this and say, great, we see it's base one and a half in some sense, some sense I've got to be careful with, but in some sense, it's base one and a half. But you know what? I actually don't believe it. I mean, even though I intellectually have just done this, I just intuitively don't understand it. I mean, this really throws me. I mean, think about it. Think about this. 13. That's a good, solid whole number. It's a right whole number. Right on the nose, a whole number. Yet apparently, it's composed of these wacky fractions. It says that if you take two of these guys, two 27 eighths, and one of these, one 9 fourth, and two of these, uh, two 3 halves, and one 1, that those horrible fractions, they're really ghastly fractions, magically combine perfectly to be a good solid whole number on the nose. It doesn't feel right to me, it doesn't even feel possible. I mean, of course, I want to check it, in fact, I can check it, in fact, I will check it, let's check it right now. So we're saying that two uh, 27 eighths, three halves cubed, and one, uh, this fraction is nine fourths, and two three tooths, and one one all those numbers magically combine to be a perfect 13. Well, do I believe that? Let's see, what do we get? Um, 2 27 eighths, that's 27 fourths, plus 9 fourths, plus 2 times 3 tooths, that's 3 plus 1. Ah, 27 fourths and 9 fourths, that's 36 fourths, plus 3 plus 1, 36 fourths plus 4. 36 fourths, that's 9. 9 plus 4 is indeed 13. Whoa. Whoa, it works out. Okay, so yes, we can actually encode numbers using the coefficients 0, 1, and 2 with powers of 1 and a half. Here is a very interesting version of something that could be called base 1 and a half or whatever. Wow. Um, of course, now I'm wondering, can I do arithmetic in this weird base? Well, for example, in fact, let's go with 13 still. I know in ordinary arithmetic that 6 plus 6 plus 1 is 13. Now, this sort of base 3, 2 version of this would be 6, uh, 6 is 2, 1, 0, plus another 6, 2, 1, 0, plus a 1, 1 is 1, yep, adds up to something. Is it 13? Well, let's see. I'll go left to right, 2 plus 2 is 4, 1 plus 1 is 2, 0 plus 0 plus 1 is 1, 4, 2, 1. However, I know there's going to be explosions here, four dots in the box, three of them explode to become two, and it'll leave what, one behind. So three explode to become two, leaving one behind, and the other ones remain untouched. Look at that. It really is 13. So it looks like I can even do some basic arithmetic in this strange machine. In fact, here's optional homework. Optional means don't do it under any circumstances. That is, go through your current math textbook and convert everything from base 10, from a 10-1 language, to this base 3 halves language. Wouldn't that be fun? Wouldn't that just confuse whoever reads your book next? All right. But actually, this is wonderful. This is wild and crazy. So. I've done some basic arithmetic, it seems to work. So the natural question is, does all arithmetic work? For example, can I do division in this weird base? Does it work the same way? I don't know, try it. Um, if I actually start doing decimals, but I've got to be careful, I can't call them decimals. Uh, decimals means, deci means 10. So first of all, think of a name what to call things that way. Um, can I write fractions in this sort of a decimally way, whatever I call it? Does it work that way? 
Do all fractions give repeating decimal expansions? In fact, there's all these interesting questions to be asked about this very machine here. In fact, some questions are actually unsolved to this day. You could be embarking on brand new thinking and brand new math doing, which is amazing. Um, but why stop there? 3, 2. Start playing with other numbers. Do 5, 4. Do 7, negative 16 or something. I don't know. Whatever makes sense. Try it. Play with it. See if you can discover something new. Negative bases? Irrational bases? Wow. What a universe of wonder and delight and mystery and intrigue, all coming from a simple dots and boxes machine. This is astounding. You are now at the forefront of mathematics research. Go for it. Have fun with it. Play with it. Hours, hours, days, months, years of literal fun here. Right here. Wonderful stuff.